Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the interconnect delay model. One of the critical problems faced by high density VLSI chips today is to deal with interconnect lines. Interconnects are nothing but wires and this interconnect introduces delay into our system. So it's very important for us to model this interconnect lines so that we can predict an approximate value of our delay. Let's start with a simple isolated interconnect line. Here is my interconnect where this is my input, this is my output. The dimensions of the interconnect line are shown with the length L, width W and thickness which is equal to T. So, and this is nothing but the thickness of my oxide which is TOx. The line resistance of this interconnect from input to output is nothing but given by R line which we know is nothing but sheet resistance RS of the interconnect into L by W. The unit of this is going to be ohms because length and width both will have a unit which is meters or centimeters which will get cancelled out and sheet resistance would have a unit which is ohms so R line is equal to the unit is in ohms. R line is nothing but sheet resistance into L by W where L by W is the number of squares with dimension W into W. We have seen this in the lower classes. Now we not need to define the resistance per unit length. So let's say this is resistance per unit length R which is nothing but RS by W. The unit of this is going to be ohm by centimeter. So this is R line from input to output which is given by sheet resistance into L by W where L by W is nothing but the number of squares with dimensions W by W. So this is the dimensions where this is W and this is W as well. They are number of squares. This is nothing but resistance per unit length which is nothing but sheet resistance by W. Then we know that R line is nothing but let's put this in equation above. R line would be equal to R small r into L where this is nothing but resistance per unit length and this is length which will get cancelled out so R line would also have a resistance or the unit in ohms. This shows that there will be an increase in R line if there will be an increase in the interconnect length. This we will see as we move ahead. Let's go ahead and quickly do the similar analysis for C line as well. C line is nothing but the parallel plate capacitor can be estimated by a simple parallel plate formula which is nothing but permittivity of the oxide into area which is nothing but L into W area of the interconnect upon the thickness oxide which is nothing but the spacing and the unit here would be given in farads. Now this is nothing but C line is nothing but the self capacitance of the line and we have made a first order approximate and hence it comes out to a parallel plate capacitor. In real time it's not going to be this. In real time there will be fringing capacitance as well. Fringing capacitance is nothing but from the side walls of the interconnect also there will be some capacitance. This is what I have shown. So with that fringing capacitance into consideration we can have a capacitance per unit length C derived from an empirical equation. So this is just an empirical equation the derivation is not there this is nothing but capacitance per unit length like the way we found out resistance per unit length which is equal to permittivity of the oxide into 1.15 into W by TOx plus 2.8 again that as I mentioned the derivation is not there into T upon TOx this is the thickness of the interconnect this is the thickness of the oxide raised to 0.22 this is farad by centimeter as I said this is capacitance per unit length. So if I have to find C line now it's going to be capacitance per unit length which is small c into length. So this is how I get my C line which is nothing but the unit is in farads. So from the previous clip I got my R line which was equal to R into L and here I got my C line which is nothing but C into L. Now if we find the values of R line and C line we can construct a circuit model which is nothing but a single rung ladder model. This is nothing but R line. This is nothing but my C line. And this is called a single rung ladder model. It's a ladder of R and C. Where I can easily say that my tau is nothing but R line into C line. Where we know that R line is small r into L and C line is small c into L. So this is nothing but R C into L square. If I put this some value constant say B, then tau 
or the delay varies or delay increases with length so if length is 1 my length is 100 my delay is going to be 100 square with a direct proportionality assuming that or presuming that this is constant now we want to go ahead and make a model of this so let's quickly go ahead now let us consider an interconnect which extends in the z direction the input voltage is applied at z equal to 0 and the length of the interconnect is l and the output voltage is z is at z equal to l now what we are trying or what we are interested in finding here is when there is this interconnect there will be a lot of rung rc ladder distributed all over the interconnect we want to model this rung rc ladder and for that what we are going to do is we are going to divide this line as you can see from the diagram into several rc ladder lungs into similar rc ladder rungs that approximate the distributed nature of the parasitics don't get intimidated what in simple words what we are trying to do is we want to model this interconnect we have already seen that an interconnect will have a rung rc correct distributed all over it so we want to make an approximate model of this and for that we are assuming that the total r line this is the total R line, right? And this is the total C line capacitance. Total R line and C line would be divided into M segments. That means Rm is equal to R line by M. Simple, right? If it's only one, R1, M is one. That means R1 is equal to R line. If there is only one capacitance, that means similarly, C1 equal to C line by one. If there are two, then it will be R and C divided into two sections. M is equal to two, right? If it's three, it will be divided into three sections, so on and so forth. So it's distributed. We have assumed that we have divided this entire distribution into M segments. And with that, we get Rm is equal to R line by M and Cm is equal to C line by M. Remember this because we will take a break for a minute. We'll move towards a concept called a Selmore delay and then come back to this. Now let's understand what is Selmore delay. Suppose this is my RC. R and C, let's call it R1 and C1. Then N board delay says that start from your capacitance and see what amount of resistance it can see and that is the value of your delay. So in this case tau1 is equal to C1 into R1. Pretty simple. Let's presume that there are two RCs like this R1, C1, R2, C2. Again Elmo delay says that start from the capacitance to the extreme look through that and see what is the amount of resistance you see so the capacitance is c2 c2 sees resistance r2 in series with r1 at that point of time c1 is assumed to be open then go to the other capacitance and see what resistance it is see is it seeing so this is c1 into r1 so this is nothing but the concept of elmo delay let's take three rc let's call this r1 c1 r2 c2 r3 c3 okay let's start from c3 c3 capacitance sees c2 and c1 are both open r3 in series with r2 in series with r1 so this is equal to c3 into r3 plus r2 plus r1 now from c2 what do you see c1 is open again from c2 you see r2 in series with r1 so C2 is nothing but R2 plus R1 plus from C1 what do you see is nothing but R1. So this is nothing but the concept of Elmo delay. Let's use this concept to get our model interconnect delay model. We have already divided suppose this was my interconnect line. We have already divided our interconnect line into M segments correct distributed all over it and we want to find an equivalent model or a lumped model for the same this is a distributed r and c are distributed all over the interconnect we assumed m segments and we wrote that rm is equal to r line by m and we also wrote that cm equal to c line by m correct now we'll use the concept of elmo delay and start finding the value of delays and then we'll see if we can generalize that value so here it's t1 tau 1 is equal to r1 c1 fair enough here tau 2 starting from c2 what resistance that it see this is for m equal to 1 right 
this was m equal to 2 so tau 2 is equal to c2 into r2 plus r2 both the resistance are r2 plus c2 into r2 this is true l mod a so this is nothing but 3 c2 r2 similarly for m equal to 3 let's find tau 3 c3 into 3 r3 is correct this c3 into r3 plus r3 plus r3 so we can say 3 c3 r3 plus this c3 into 2 times r3 plus c3 r3 into 2 plus the last one c3 r3 this is nothing but 6 times c3 r3 so we can keep on doing this now we have got a general value of tau m so before we go to that this is nothing but when m equal to 1 i have r1 c1 when m equal to 2 i have 3 c2 r2 when m equal to 3 i have 6 c3 r3 so in general case i can say that tau for m is going to be equal to m to m plus 1 by 2 into rm cm correct this is a general deduction very very straightforward to understand whether this is correct or not let's put m equal to 1 2 or 3 anything say let's put m equal to 3 here this is 3 into 3 plus 1 that is 12 by 2 which is 6 correct and it's 3 so 6 r3 c3 which is exactly what we had so we got a general formula for tau m here now let's put the value of rm and cm what we assumed at the start we have it here so we can easily say that tau m is equal to m into m plus 1 by 2 r line by m into c line by m correct let's do it on the next slide which is nothing but just rewrite let's rewrite that again m into m plus 1 by 2 into r line by m into c line by m which is nothing but m into m plus 1 by 2m square r line into c line and we know that for larger values of m m square would be greater than m so we can easily say that m square by 2m square into r line into c line which is nothing but m square m square cancel r line into c line by 2 so this is nothing but my tau m so overall delay now in terms of a lump capacitance can be shown as nothing but r line c line by 2 for this stage and for the previous stage it would again be it would again be c line by 2 this is for the previous stage correct so what we learned here is we can we took an interconnect line we found out its distributed r line and c line and we divided that into m segments because we wanted a lumped model of that interconnect which we can use to approximate the value of the delay this is just a model and when we did the deductions through elmo delay we found that tau was nothing but r line into c line by 2 and this is the simple RC interconnect model, lumped pi network also we call it interconnect model or lumped pi network. So what we can do is whenever we have an interconnect now, we can easily replace this interconnect with this lump pi model and approximate the value of delay. This is R line. So any interconnect, we can model it by putting R line and C line by 2 and find the approximate value of delay. So this is how interconnect delay modeling is derived. I hope you have followed it. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much.